Here it is, the 256 gigabyte version of the Galaxy Z Flip 3 in Phantom Black. We're gonna start with a quick unboxing, then I'm gonna show you guys the fastest way to transfer all of your data from any Samsung device, any non-Samsung Android device, or any iPhone. And as always, I do have video time codes down in the description so you guys can quickly jump around to find the parts you care most about. If you guys appreciate video time codes, let me know by dropping a like down below. The first thing you'll notice with the box is that it is considerably smaller than the previous generation because you don't get quite as much in the box. Opening the box, the first thing we see is the Z Flip 3 itself. There's a little pull tab at the bottom to take it out. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side. Underneath that, you get another little box and inside this box, you get your USB-C to USB-C cable as well as some documentation. And on the back side of the box, you get your SIM ejector tool. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to the side because we're gonna need that a little bit later. And that is all you get in the box with the Galaxy Z Flip 3. So gone are the days of getting a charger in the box or headphones. That said, if you don't have a charger from a previous device for some reason, or maybe you only have five watt chargers and you wanna upgrade to a 15 watt charger, which is what this phone is capable of, then I honestly just recommend going with Samsung's official 25 watt charger. It is marginally more expensive than their 15 watt charger, but you're getting some future proofing by going with the 25 watt version. And the reason I recommend Samsung chargers is because they have a technology called PPS and not every charger has that. So if you get some generic 25 watt charger, it may not charge quite as fast as an official Samsung charger. If you wanna pick one of these up for yourself, I'll have a link down in the description. And one more thing, I did pick up a few cases for the Z Flip 3. If you guys are interested in seeing my reviews of these cases, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn notifications so you don't miss the uploads. Now let's set the box aside and take a closer look at the Z Flip 3 itself. To take the plastic cover off, flip the phone over to the back. There's a little pull tab at the top. Just go ahead and pull that. And the cover comes right off. And here's a look at the Phantom Black color. I absolutely love the Phantom line of colors for Samsung devices because they don't pick up fingerprints at all. Flipping over to the main screens, the screen on the Z Flip 3 does feel a tiny bit more like glass compared to the original Galaxy Z Flip. It's not quite as big of a difference when comparing the Galaxy Z Fold 2 to the Fold 3. That was a pretty significant difference in feeling of the screen, but the original Z Flip already had a pretty good feeling screen to start with, so the difference won't be as noticeable. In terms of the hinge, the Z Flip 3 does feel a bit more satisfying to open and close, mainly because the hinge feels a bit more sturdy. And I did notice that the hinge on the Flip 3 can stay at a much more shallow angle compared to the original Flip. For reference, here's the minimal angle I could get on the original Z Flip without the phone just folding open when I lay it flat. And here it is on the Flip 3. So there's definitely a notable difference in hinge quality. Opening the Flip 3 also takes a bit less force to get it started, and once you get it started, it does just stay open so you can readjust your hand to finish opening the device. And in terms of build quality, the Flip 3 feels like a massive improvement over the original Z Flip. Everything just feels so much more premium. The material feels more premium, the frame feels more premium. It just feels like a much more expensive device compared to the original Z Flip, even though Samsung actually reduced the price with the Galaxy Z Flip 3. In terms of button layouts, everything is almost identical. You still have the fingerprint sensor in the same spot, as well as the volume up and down buttons. And even the SIM card trays are in the same spot, but the new SIM tray is a little bit smaller. The camera layout on the Z Flip 3 also looks a lot better in my personal opinion compared to the original Z Flip, and the screen on the Z Flip 3 is massive compared to the screen on the original Z Flip. So that's it for the design differences, now let's go ahead and set up the Flip 3. The first thing you need to do is turn off both devices and transfer the SIM card from your old device to your new device. So let's go ahead and pop the SIM card out using the SIM ejector tool and pushing it into the SIM ejection slot on the old device. Then go ahead and dump out your SIM card and put that tray back in. Now take out the SIM tray on the new device, put your SIM card in the new tray, and insert that into the new device. Now just power up both devices. Since I have an unlocked version of the Z Flip 3, I'm gonna have to restart my device so that the service provider information can be updated. If you have a carrier version of the phone, you're probably not gonna see this message. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap OK and let it restart. Now that my phone has restarted, I get the option to tap this start button here. And now I have to agree to the terms and conditions and a privacy policy, but I don't need to agree to sending diagnostic data. What this does is it sends information about how you use your device to Samsung so that they can improve future devices. And there's no personal information sent with that data, but regardless, you don't have to send that data if you don't want to. Once you've made your choice, tap next. Now choose a Wi-Fi network to log into and log in. 
Once you're logged in, tap next. Since I have a factory unlocked version of the Flip 3, this is gonna be the next screen I see, which is to copy my apps and my data. If you have a carrier version from someone like AT&T or Verizon, then you may have other options pop up before this that say something like AT&T backup and restore or Verizon backup and restore. Don't use those methods. Keep skipping those options until you get to this screen. Once you get to this screen, tap next. It'll ask you if you have your old device with you to transfer information from. If you know that you're not gonna have your old device because you'll be trading it in when you pick up your Galaxy Z Flip 3, don't worry, there is another way to transfer all of that data, and I'll cover that in a minute. For now, I do have my old device, so I'm just gonna tap next. Now it says it's updating Smart Switch, which is the application we're gonna be using to do the transfer. Once the update finishes, you get the option to transfer from either a Galaxy or Android device or an iPhone or iPad. Right now, I'm gonna be transferring everything from a Samsung Galaxy device, but in a minute, I'm gonna show you guys how to transfer everything from a non-Samsung Android device as well as from an iPhone. So for now, I'm just gonna tap Galaxy, tap Agree. Then I get the option to transfer with a cable or wirelessly. Both methods work great. I recommend using a cable method if you're transferring all of your photos and videos and you have something like 100 gigs that you wanna transfer from one device to the other. But if you're not gonna be transferring photos and videos, then the wireless method will be good enough. In this case, I'm gonna go with a wireless transfer. Now my new device is gonna try to connect to the old device using Samsung Smart Switch. If the previous device is a Samsung device, you may get a pop-up that asks if you wanna transfer everything to the new device. Just tap yes, then tap agree, tap allow, then tap allow again. And now my new device is gonna scan everything on the old device to figure out what it can transfer. Once the scan's complete, I'll get a list of everything I can transfer. If you don't get a pop-up on your old device or you accidentally dismiss it, that's okay. All you have to do is open up the Smart Switch application, tap send data, then tap wireless. Now just tap allow again, and you're met with the same list of everything you can transfer. Taking a closer look at everything you can transfer, you get all of your Samsung and Google accounts, and it doesn't matter how many Google accounts you're signed into on the other device, all of them will transfer to the new device. You can transfer all of your calls and contacts, and you can also transfer all of your messages. And if I tap this little arrow here, I can select to transfer all of my messages the last two years, the last one year, last six months, last three months, and just the last 30 days. And it'll also tell me how many messages there are in each of those options and how much data it is for those messages. You can also transfer all of your applications. And if you tap this little arrow here, you can select which specific applications you wanna transfer. So if you only wanna transfer a few applications, you can tap this little icon at the top here to uncheck all of them then just select the ones that you do want to transfer, or you can check all of the applications and uncheck the ones that you don't want to transfer. Something important to point out here is that the calendar app doesn't transfer because all of that data is transferred automatically when you log into your account. And if you're transferring data from Samsung Notes, any locked notes won't be transferred, so you'll first have to unlock those notes on the old device before transferring them to the new device. One big improvement with Smart Switch this year is that you can now transfer WhatsApp messages. Now they don't transfer directly through this application, but if you tap this little eye icon, it shows you exactly what you need to do to transfer all your WhatsApp messages from your previous device to your new device. Once you've selected all the apps you wanna transfer, just tap done. You can also transfer all of the previous phone's settings, and these are the phone settings, your app settings, as well as your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings. Now the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings are the most important because this actually transfers all the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. And that means you don't have to ask your friends for their Wi-Fi passwords again because all those passwords will just transfer from the old device to the new device. If you don't wanna transfer specific things, you can just uncheck those boxes. I personally like to start fresh when I get a new device, so I typically don't transfer phone settings and app settings, but I always transfer the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. Further down, you get a home screen option, and this lets you transfer your widget and app layouts, as well as your lock screen and home screen wallpapers. And I highly recommend keeping this one on because it's gonna save you a ton of time with setting up the new device. Below that, you get the option to transfer specific folders for images, as well as specific images within those folders. So you can be really selective with what you wanna transfer. And the same is true for your videos, your audio files, and even your regular documents and files. So if I just wanted to transfer some of the Excel files, I could uncheck these boxes, select the Excel file folder, uncheck the ones I don't wanna transfer, then tap done. At the bottom, there's an option to see what you can't transfer. And here it tells you that you can't transfer read-only contacts. You also can't transfer calendar events because those sync automatically. And you also can't transfer locked notes in the Samsung Notes application. So if you do have locked notes, you'll first have to unlock those before doing the transfer. The WhatsApp chat history doesn't transfer directly, but if you tap the little eye icon that I showed you guys earlier, it'll walk you through the steps to transfer all that chat history. And there are certain applications that won't let you transfer their data due to their app policies, so you won't be able to transfer that app data as well. 
And the last thing you can't transfer are default wallpapers and Galaxy Themes wallpapers. And default wallpapers are just the wallpapers that came with the device. So for example, if I was transferring from an iPhone, I wouldn't be able to transfer the iPhone's native wallpapers. And that's probably due to copyright reasons. Once you're done selecting everything you want to transfer, if you look back at the top, you'll see the total amount of data that's going to be transferred, as well as the amount of time it's going to take to transfer that data. And if I uncheck images and videos, you can see that the amount of data drops significantly, as well as the amount of time it takes to transfer. Once you've selected everything you want to transfer, just tap transfer, and it'll start moving all the data over. So that's everything you can transfer from a Samsung device. Now let's see what you can transfer from a non-Samsung Android device. So here's my Pixel 5, and we're going to see what you can transfer from this device. Now, when you're transferring from a non-Samsung Android device, you do have to download the Smart Switch application. So just go to the Play Store, search for Smart Switch, and go ahead and download and install that application. Once it's installed, just open it, then tap Let's Go. And on my new device, I'm going to tap Galaxy Android, since this is an Android device. I'm going to tap Wireless on both devices. I'm going to accept the transfer on my Pixel 5. Then my Flip 3 is going to scan everything on the Pixel 5 to see what it can transfer. And it's going to give me this full list of everything I can transfer. And since this is not a Samsung device, I can't transfer quite as much data, but I can still transfer most of it. For starters, I can still transfer all of my Google accounts, as well as my calls and contacts. I can also transfer all of my messages and select how many messages I want to transfer, just like when transferring from a Samsung device. The only reason this is grayed out now is because I recently factory reset this device, so there's actually no messages on it to transfer. But if there were a bunch of messages here, this wouldn't be grayed out and I could select them. I get the same app transfer options, so I can select which specific applications I'd like to transfer. You are pretty limited with what you can transfer for settings. You only get phone settings. You do not get the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connections, which is kind of a bummer because that means you have to re-log into all those Wi-Fi networks. In terms of images, videos, music, and documents, you do still get the same option to select individual folders and individual images, videos, or files within those folders. So that's everything you can transfer from a non-Samsung Android device. Now let's see what you can transfer from an iPhone. When transferring from an iPhone, you'll either need a lightning to USB-C cable or a lightning to standard USB cable and a USB-C to standard USB adapter. If you don't have one of these adapters and you want to pick one up, I'll have a link to get one down in the description. Since I have a lightning to USB-C cable, I'm just going to use that. So first I'm going to tap the iPhone iPad option, then plug the cable in. Once you plug the cable in, the iPhone is going to ask you to trust the device. Tap trust, then log into your iPhone. Once you've entered your passcode, tap next. Now the new phone's going to search through the iPhone and find everything that you can transfer. As you can tell, there's still a ton of different things you can transfer, but you do lose some customizability options. So you can still transfer your calls and contacts, as well as all of your messages. And if I tap this little arrow, I can still select all the different date ranges for those messages, but I don't see how many messages are going to transfer or how much storage it's going to take up. There's the option to transfer data from iPhone apps, but don't get too excited because it's pretty limited. You can only transfer your calendar appointments, any notes that you have from your iPhone notes app, any bookmarks you have in the Safari browser, and any alarms you set up with the clock app. One important thing to note is that if you have any locked notes in the Apple Notes app, then you will have to unlock those notes before they can transfer to the new device. Surprisingly, you can transfer most of the settings from the iPhone. So you can transfer the phone settings as well as your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. So you won't need to re-enter any of your Wi-Fi passwords. You can even transfer your home screen setup from the iPhone, which includes your app and shortcut locations, as well as the lock screen and home screen wallpapers, as long as those wallpapers aren't the original ones that came with the iPhone, likely due to copyright reasons. And to be clear, this transfers the exact order of the applications from your iPhone, so the setup process gets much faster if you keep this enabled. You do still get the option to transfer all of your images, videos, audio, and documents, but you can't select specific folders to transfer from or specific files like you can when transferring from an Android device. And another thing to point out is that if you have any of these types of files saved only in your iCloud, and they're not actually saved directly to your iPhone, those files won't transfer. So if you wanted to transfer some of those files, you'll first have to download them to the iPhone before you can transfer. At the bottom, you get an option to see what can't transfer. So you can't transfer any FaceTime or voice call history, which kind of makes sense because you can't get FaceTime on an Android device. And you can't transfer messages with iMessage effects, which makes sense again because you don't have iMessage effects on Android devices. And similar to when transferring from Android devices, you can't transfer any data that's in a locked note or any data that the app developer doesn't allow you to transfer. And as I mentioned earlier, you can't transfer default wallpapers, again, likely for copyright reasons. 
If you're not going to have access to your old device when you get your Galaxy Z Flip 3, maybe because you're gonna be trading it in, then all hope is not lost because you can still transfer all the data using either a USB-C thumb drive or a standard USB thumb drive and a standard USB to USB-C adapter. The only caveat with this method is that it only works with Android devices. So if you're transferring from an iPhone, you won't be able to do this. So if your previous device is an Android device, all you have to do is download the smart switch application to that device, open the application, go ahead and plug in your USB stick, then tap this SD card icon in the top right corner, then tap the USB storage, and now I can select all the data available on this phone and back it up to this USB stick. And I get all the exact same transfer options I did when connecting directly to the Z Flip 3. Once you've selected everything you wanna back up, just tap it back up and it'll save it all to the thumb drive. Once everything transfers, just take out your USB stick and keep it in a safe place until you get your new device. And once I've traded in my old device and all I have in front of me is my Z Flip 3, we can now begin the transfer based off of the thumb drive. However, the setup method is a bit different when transferring all your data from a USB stick. When you get to this page, instead of copying the data, you're gonna tap don't copy and then finish going through the setup process without actually restoring any of the data. Once you finish going through your setup process, you're gonna go ahead and open up the smart switch application. If the application is not installed, just go to the Google Play Store and install it. Once you open the application, you get that same SD card option in the upper right corner that we saw earlier. So now I just plug the USB stick into my new device tap that icon in the upper right corner, then select which backup I wanna transfer. I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. And as you can see, I still get all the same transfer options as I'd have if I transferred directly from the Galaxy Z Flip to the Z Flip 3. The only difference is I can't customize the options anymore, which isn't really a big deal because I already went through the whole customization process when I backed everything up in the first place. So from here, all I have to do now is tap restore and all the data is gonna be transferred to my new phone. If you already set up your Galaxy Z Flip 3 and didn't transfer any data, that's okay. Just go ahead and open up that Samsung smart switch application, tap receive data, and you'll get the same transfer methods that I showed you guys earlier. And what's great about this is that this means you can transfer data from multiple devices. So if you have a main device that has most of the data that you wanna transfer, but you have a secondary device that maybe has a bunch of photos on it that you wanna transfer, you can transfer all the main data first, then jump back into the smart switch application, and then transfer all the photos from the second device after. If you guys found this video helpful and want to help me out, go ahead and hit that like button to help me beat the YouTube algorithm. And if you guys don't want to miss my in-depth Galaxy Z Flip 3 coverage, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.